Okay, so leading on from the previous video, um, where we looked at how cosine and sine uh, work, okay, graphically. What we're going to do is we're going to try and solve cos of x plus 60 degrees is equal to sine x. And we're going to solve it between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay, so first thing, okay, um, this is a harder extension problem, okay? So don't think that all of your questions on the exam will be at this level. Okay, so don't uh, worry too much about this, but this is really for um, extension purposes, okay? So, but it is well worth kind of knowing these techniques um, as you go on to um, your second year, okay? So it is well worth knowing. So this looks uh, inherently difficult because we have a cosine and a sine, um, one equaling the other. I've got this, what appears to be a translation involved, okay? That's where the problems really are, okay? So first thing that I'm going to do to make this easier is to try and write sine x in terms of cosine of x. The reason why I would do this uh, will become clear, okay? But we're going to start off with trying to write y is equal to sine x uh, in terms of cosine. So sine x is... Um, a translation of cosine, okay? So in the previous video, what I did was I sketched um, sine and cosine on top of each other. So sine x looks like that, uh, cosine of... You see, these sketches <laughs> become very, very difficult, um, one on top of the other. But the, the concept is that um, cosine of x, which is this one here, Okay, so if I take that point, to get it onto sine x, to map it on, I must translate by the vector 90, 0. Okay, so that's what I would have to do, working in degrees. So that means that sine x is the same as cosine, which has been translated by 90 degrees to the right. And so cos of x minus 90. Okay, so what I could do is I could replace... Uh, the sine x here with um, co cosine of x minus 90. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, at this stage, we then have uh, the problem uh, of we've got two cosines, but, okay, well, if cosine of one number must be cosine of another number, then those two numbers... Uh, should be equivalent, should be the same. So, uh, what I can do is I can put one equal to the other. Now, this isn't the correct approach at this stage, but I want to show you why it's not, okay? Uh, we are going to put one thing equal to the other when we uh, get it into an appropriate format, but if I put x plus 60 equal to x minus 90, what happens is that I can take x from both sides... And then I get left with 60 degrees is equal to minus 90 degrees, which clearly isn't right, okay? Something has gone wrong. So I can't uh, move on until I've considered uh, how else I can write sine x. Because sine x doesn't have to be written as cos of x minus 90. It can be written as other things as well. Okay, now this brings me back to another point from the previous video where we looked at cosine and the fact that cosine is symmetric in the y axis. Okay, so what we came across from there was that cos of x is exactly the same as cos of minus x. So, in other words, if I make this negative, then I haven't changed things whatsoever, okay? That's what this is telling me. If I replace x with minus x, then nothing changes. So instead, I can write cos of x plus 60 is equal to cosine of 
minus x plus 90, or 90 minus x, okay? Flipping the two terms around. So now I can put this bracket equal to that bracket, removing the cosines, and I'd be left with x plus 60 is equal to 90 minus x. I can add x to both sides. I can take 60 from both sides, and then I can divide both sides by 2, and I get x is equal to 15 degrees, okay? And that is one of the solutions. x is equal to 15 works. However, this isn't the only solution, okay? Now, um, why is that the case? Well, I'm going to try sketching um, sine x and cos x on the same graph again. Let's, let's try it again, because it will be much clearer when I do so. So, um, let's try and do that accurate method that I tried last time. Okay, so uh, sine x looks like that, and cosine of x, okay, must go through there, must go through there, so something like that. Okay, so from looking at this sketch, what I'm trying to identify is how often sine x and cosine of x intersect themselves, okay? Now, because they are translations of the same curve, effectively, this section is kind of like a mirrored, sec uh, mirrored version of that section. So this distance, this horizontal distance between the two solutions, okay, you might already guess what that distance is. It's got to be 180 degrees, okay? It's got to be half the period, okay, of the two functions. So each, it doesn't matter if I translate um, sine x or cosine of x along the curve because the intersection points will also translate at the same rate. Okay? So, the distance between the two intersection points, as long as the curve doesn't get stretched in any way, will remain at 180 degrees. And so if I found one of them, then I can merely add on 180 degrees in order to get the next one, okay? And so there are two solutions to this original problem, 15 degrees and 195 degrees, okay? Now this took a lot more thought about how the curves work, okay? How the trigonometric functions work. Um, but it is nice to see that they do behave by certain rules and we can solve problems that look like this using the information that has come before. But remember, this is um, very much extension work. So don't uh, spend all of your time making sure you know how to do this ready for the exam. Uh, but it's good to have an appreciation of where these things come from.